Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host, and I'd like to ask you, what sits behind your judgment of others? You know, how come you judge people in certain ways and other people don't agree with you? <laughs> or you don't agree with them? What is sitting there in you that creates the, the understanding of what's different about others that you might have opinions about. <laughs> so to do, to talk about this, we're gonna talk with our card expert, our source card expert, who's been on the show many times and we love talking about cards. And, uh, and so we're gonna look at this uh, idea of, of judgment of others. So Alexander Dunlop, welcome back to Energy Stew. Thank you, Peter. Always a pleasure, a lot of fun to talk with you. Well, I'm excited about this because we, we've done many shows on the cards that we're born to uh, based on our birth dates. And these are the source cards, the 52 card deck. And, and generally we talk about how they influence our personalities. What is it about us that is unique because of the cards we're born to? But for this show, I think we can talk about why, why through our own eyes of our cards, we see others in, in different ways than other people would see them, right? Well, that's right. And that's the only way we can see. <laughs> the only way we can see and the only way we can interact is through our own lens, through our own energy frequency, through our own card supply. And people don't really understand how judgmental they are because of their cards. Yep. You know, they might think they're just being objective. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we make implicit assumptions and implicit expectations based on what we would do and how we would handle it. And that's all based on our own cards to play. Right. You know, for instance, I'm a four of clubs and I want the truth from people. I, I don't want any messing around. I want I want everything four squared because that's the four. Clubs of the right. mind. So I, 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 my mind wants to know what's true or not. And, right. and give me just the fact, that, give me the clarity. Yeah, give me the clarity. And, and nowadays there's very little clarity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm, I'm very judgmental about that. But mm. for instance, my wife is a two of clubs. And twos are highly interactive and they yeah. see things through the eyes of appropriate interaction. What, what works to interact well with others. And so she looks at me, who's not a two, and she's judging, often judging that I, I'm not interacting the way she would. <laughs> but she doesn't see that as coming from her own card, because as, as we said earlier, people don't realize that their objectivity is really more subjective based on how life uh, is seen through them. Yes. Well, let's, uh, I love this topic. I think it's a fantastic one. We could probably do multiple shows on it. Good. Because Good. what comes to mind is there's the negative side, which is, the judgments that you're pointing out that we're always having certain expectations of how things should be based on our card supply. But the other side of it, the positive side, is that we're always bringing that possibility with us into any interaction. So someone playing a two is always bringing the possibility of making the interaction cohesive and good union and good communication. Yes. Someone who's a or is always bringing the possibility 
into any interaction that we're going to find the truth. We're going to get down to the bottom of this and we're going to square this away and nail this down and make this clear. And we're going to find a good grounding together. You know, that can, that's true for all of the, the numbers. So it occurs to me right away as we start off in this deep topic that there is a judgment that we hold, but then there's also a possibility on the other side of the coin. And what's that other possibility? The possibility is that we create that interaction, meaning in your example, playing the four of clubs, you have the truth to offer, right? And if you see that people are not completely truthful or they're in a fog or they're unclear, they, they don't have their T's crossed and their I's dotted, you can offer that. You have that gift of wisdom and clarity with your four clubs to bring the truth out right but i and might not be as sensitive in the way i do it with others that a two yep. of clubs will identify and go wait a minute uh say that differently that's, <laughs> that well this what i'm saying is that we have a judgment that's based on our cards but we also have an opportunity based on our cards and it's the flip side of the same coin depending on how we approach it for example, if you're just beating people over the head with the truth and just telling them that they're wrong and they're stupid, that isn't necessarily <laughs> the way to bring the truth out, right? right? And in your example of your wife, uh, if she's so focused on what's appropriate in the interaction, she may bite her tongue and not really be honest and not really create real dialogue and real interaction because she's too worried about keeping everything smooth and calm. You know, so there's judgment, but she's judging the situation. We need to make sure everybody's getting along. And then she's not actually allowing for genuine dialogue to take place. But not, not or, realizing it. I mean, she, yeah. you know, to her, she's just being appropriate. And, right. and being appropriate might mean that she's not addressing some things that, that I would address maybe yeah. uh, less handily than she does. <laughs> well, well, exactly. So she's judging the situation that it needs to be appropriate and people need to be appropriate in the way they interact. But that judgment is blocking her possibility of creating real union and real dialogue and real communication. Right. So there's so many cards, of course, there are 52, there's yeah. 53 cards because there's also the, the Joker. <laughs> And, um, and so we have so many different choices of how to behave uh, and how to, how to judge others. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you also are in a relationship with you and your wife don't have the same cards. <laughs> well, it's true. And, and, and especially in the beginning of our relationship, it was quite challenging. You know, exactly what we're talking about, certain expectations, certain judgments, well, why isn't she doing that? Or why isn't he doing that? Because we're seeing each other through the lens of our own assumptions and expectations. Right, our own truth of how life is supposed to be. Right. Uh, because that's how we understand life is through our cards. And, uh, and then we look at others and they go, wait a minute, are we playing with the, the same deck? <laughs> Well, one of the wonderful things for me about knowing these cards is setting me free from these egotistical limits. Not that I still don't get caught in it sometimes. I'm learning not to, but in general, to set me free from the egotistical assumption that I'm right and everyone else is wrong. Well, let's talk about you being a nine and what that means and sure. how that makes people wrong. <laughs> Well, playing the nine of hearts, I often get upset that I see people not being compassionate or forgiving or loving or not um, caring about people, putting policies in place, for, for instance, apropos of the current lockdown policies, mandate policies, putting policies in place that actually hurt people rather than lift people up. And instead of treating people based on humanity, and real love and compassion for human beings, doing things that I think are not compassionate and judging it as a result. Or in personal interactions, if people are careless or not considerate 
and they're doing things that hurt other people's feelings, I get really upset. I'm like, how could you do that? How could you be so careless in the way that you're treating this person and you're not being compassionate to this person? And so then I get angry and I get upset and judgmental about that. Right, and, and not, not that other people wouldn't think that way, but they might not have the empathy that you have and, and the right. focus about it that you have. Right, and they, exactly, they might be more pragmatic about it, more practical, you know, what, for whatever reason. Like I, an example um, in my building, a, a mass mandate that I disagree with in my building, I talked to one of the members of the board and he sympathized. He said, listen, I don't like it either, but we need to do it for legal reasons. And so that's a very pragmatic explanation of why something needs to happen just for legal reasons. Well, but luckily, me, luckily, a judge it, just shut down that legal reason. <laughs> well, yes, but I'm just as an example, for me, it's emotional. It's purely what feels good. And wow, I was like, no, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel right to me. So then. I'm judging it, but other people have different lenses, obviously. So they're looking at it from another perspective entirely, rather than from an emotional perspective, the way I'm looking at it. Right, so let's look at other cards that might look at things differently. Sure, um, where do you wanna start? Uh, start with um, sixes. <laughs> I know you like to talk about sixes with your son. Right. Um, why don't you do the sixes? Well, the sixes are, I'm a four and I'm seeking clarity. Sixes are very similar, but I, I, they're, they're more concerned about the, their karma and, and the truth um, being fulfilled. Otherwise, uh, we won't go to Nirvana. So the, they're, they're very worried that the truth isn't true and, uh, and are judgmental, much more judgmental about, it. I mean, I am too, but sixes are, are willing to uh, argue about it perhaps more than a four. Well, what I thought you were gonna say, which you've said to me before, is the sixes are really fussy about making sure people do what they're supposed to do. Right, they're very responsible and, and uh, want to be clear with people that, uh, you know, they see through the eyes of responsibility. Right. So six will judge other people and be like, you're not being a good citizen. You're not following the rules. You're not doing your part to take care of all of us. Why are you making it harder for the rest of us by going your own way, and following your own voice? You need to be responsible to everybody. Right. And, and so... Uh, I'm not perfect, and so being being in a relationship with a six, uh, I have to watch my step or watch my mouth, <laughs> and uh, well, not be correct. That's the you know nobody's perfect, and that's that's what's underneath this uh, topic that you've picked is that we all have our human foibles and eccentricities, and yet we judge other people based on this lens that we put on them. And this lens is our own card to play. We put this lens on them that you should do it this way. And it's not possible for anyone really because we all are unique beings. So we're always falling short with our own judgments. And I'm, I'm thinking of tens now that tens, because I'm looking at people who can't always um, follow this, the true path, only because they get so overwhelmed. Tens uh, tend to have a lot of pressure on them and, and they end up maybe juggling too much in life or being you know, yeah. too threatened by life and will yeah. uh, take shortcuts occasionally and, and make mistakes that uh, uh, other people might be judging. Well, they might, and, and in my experience, and this you know, makes sense from what it, the energy of the 10, the 10 feel unsupported and like other people are not pulling their weight, other people are not doing enough. 
like they're unappreciated. They feel like I'm doing so much. I'm juggling so much. And what the hell are you doing? You're not doing anything. You're not contributing anything. Why aren't you stepping up and doing more? Well, and not only that, they're actually creating expectations that the 10 will do the job for them. <laughs> you know, they, they, people give a lot of responsibility to 10s because that's the princess card and she's uh, the treasure of the kingdom and she can get things done for people. I like that. The treasure of the kingdom. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Peter. Well, I, I know a lot of 10s and I've had a lot of experience with many 10s and it's, uh, I mean, it, it's, it really is a, a wonderful card to have because it's, it is a, a treasure card, but it does create expectations in people that can be unwieldy. You mean it, and they, do you mean they judge other people for their expectations? No, no, they, 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 they judge themselves because they can only do so much and people expect oh, yeah. much more of them than they can do. So how do you see that translating into what they judge other people for? The pressure that people put on them that, uh, you know, that they, you know, they avoid pressure or, you know, they'll, they'll do things to uh, not be so consumed by other people's needs. So they, they, they assume other people are putting pressure on them and they judge other people for that. Right. Not, not only assume, but people do. Because unconsciously, everybody knows each other's cards. And when you're with a, a 10, you expect a lot of them because they're such okay. a treasure. You're, you're bringing out another aspect of this topic, which is that the things that we judge other people for sometimes they may actually be doing to us. In what way? Well, in the example of the 10, that the 10 thinks other people are not pulling their weight, but putting too much pressure on them to do it, those other people might actually be thinking that, oh, that 10 person, they'll get it done. I don't need to do it. Right? So that the judgment may actually be rooted in some real energy coming from the other person, meaning it's not just imagined. It's not just made up. That right, there is yeah, people project on them. And then again, it depends on what your own card is that you project on those tens. Yeah, well, I think this is a great insight. I think we could apply that to every card. And for example, someone may feel you playing the four of clubs and be like, well, Peter will sort that out. I, I don't need to worry about finding the truth on this. And I can let that go. And Peter will handle that for me. Well, but luckily, that's why people um, call me and come to my classes and listen to well, these radio well, this, shows. <laughs> this, this is what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. Um, you know, you may judge people for not speaking the truth clearly, but they come to you because they want you to speak the truth clearly to them. Yeah, I'm thankful that I have that four of clubs. But then again, I also, my ruling card is the jack of spades. And that scares most of those people off because <laughs> they're judging yeah, me as, as out of the box. Here I have this very strong box going with the four of clubs of clarity and truth. And then I, um, my jack of spades likes to uh, jump out of it and go, ha ha, now I've got you fooled. I have something new to tell you. And, um, and that doesn't, people don't always like that. I I think this is an example of what you said earlier about people judging themselves. I think that Jack of Spades is what gives you that power to speak spiritual insights and conscious awareness into people's lives. Yes, and, and I think that's what attracts a lot of people and it also is what throws many people off. So, you know, so they're, they're judging me. And again, we come back to this unconscious nature of being able to read everybody's cards without knowing anything about cards because it's the vibe the cards are only the window to our vibe that's right the cards are a conceptual model to represent the energy frequencies 
Right. And so we're all reading them anyway. And luckily, yeah. you and I and many and many people now, uh, thankfully, because of you and your book and your teachings, uh, can uh, understand these vibes better. Yeah, thank you. I mean, certainly finding the cards helped me to understand these vibes. I know some people haven't needed the cards and have found out why they're here and what their gifts are. And I'm very impressed with such people who have that level of self-awareness. I needed these cards personally to help me clarify these energy frequencies that I'm living in. <laughs> That's what attracts people to them, I think, is that we need them. <laughs> I, I think. And I had searched everywhere for my answers, as I've written about elsewhere. Right. But we'll always be our cards, no matter whether we know them or not. We just can do a better job with ourselves yeah. by knowing them. And people can yeah. find out about their cards by going to your, your new website, mm -hmm. thesourcecards.com. Dot com. Yeah. And, and there they can find out what their personal card is to put in their birth date and 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 then they you know because we'll we'll do more shows about this because i think it's very important for people to understand not only how we know ourselves but how we see every everybody else around us behaving in ways that we can agree or disagree about just because of our own cards well that's right and in my marriage it's so helpful and we talk about it almost daily my wife and I, uh, how we see each other's cards to play in action and how it to understand each other and have compassion for each other, to see each other more clearly and to call each other out in gentle ways, sometimes not so gentle, but mostly gentle, where we're like, oh, you're doing that thing where your shadow is coming out and you're playing the low side. So it becomes a whole conversation that we have in our relationship that helps us. Yeah, well, and so we, we want to help all couples <laughs> and all families because also with your kids and how your kids see you and, and how they might be troubled by different things only because of their cards, whereas other kids with different cards wouldn't have the same problem. Well, that's right. And so I, that's one of the things that I'm really passionate about is supporting parents to raise their children to be the best that they can be. Right. And, uh, and it's great to have these handles. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I have a granddaughter who's the uh, queen of clubs. And I just, I love it about her. I just see her through the lens of the queen of clubs and enjoy her so much because I know how true she is to being that card. Yep. And yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah, she's too young to understand any of that herself. She's just turning five tomorrow, actually. <laughs> um, even implicitly in the way that you support her and encourage her, you know, because children, of course, are picking up on nonverbal cues and the ways in which we can implicitly support children to be the best version of themselves. Right. By, let's say, example, with your granddaughter, encouraging her intuition or encouraging her vocabulary, encouraging her that she knows things psychically and that would support her to play her queen of clubs well right. where many times in my coaching practice i have people come to me who are born to play the queen of clubs who told me that growing up their parents discouraged them from being psychic or intuitive and they got scared and nervous about their intuitive psychic abilities and so then that becomes a neurosis in their life and that they need to unwind and unravel but if we know that someone's playing the queen of clubs, we can support them and say, listen, you have psychic abilities, you know things. Well, not only that, I've been doing that with her for a couple of years now. And I find that she comes to me with her intuitive insights more than others. And amazing. Yeah, she has really amazing gifts that uh, she knows that I'm very accepting of, whereas other people will go, oh, you don't know that, you know, or how would you know that? Exactly. And that would do her great damage. Well, I, I hope not, but uh, but because I think she's powerful. It she's is, a queen. Has, so she, right, you have, she has you that you can resonate these gifts back to her. Yes. If she had no one 
could resonate the gifts back to her, she would start to doubt those gifts. Yes. And it would do her. I, I think that's one, one thing that parents should know about children in general is that yeah. we have to give them room to explore their imaginations and not say, uh, oh, that's just your imagination. There might be a lot of truths behind what they have to say. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I love that. It's um, so <laughs> I'm still waiting to find out with my uh, my other granddaughter. She hasn't started talking yet and she's a double six of clubs. And I I'm trying to figure out what what she'll be like that way. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, you know, there's so many because there are are these two main cards and then we have a whole hand of cards. There's so yeah. many ways that are dynamic in our personalities that you understand and I do. And, uh, and we want to help people understand themselves so well by knowing how their, their, their cards interact with each other and interact with others. And, and so uh, with other people. And so, um, so this is such an important subject matter. I'm so glad that you're, yeah. you've grabbed it. <laughs> it goes really deep. I and mean, we were talking about, as you say, just the birth card and the personality card. But then, for instance, in my marriage, we're often talking about the Pluto card, which is the shadow. Right. And that's where we see each other's shadowy dynamics pop up. And that, those can be the things that sabotage a relationship. So we're often talking about our Pluto cards with each other or right. our soul challenge cards or our Saturn cards. We're often interacting with each other, yeah. discussing those together. And, well. and we can do shows about particular, you know, like shadow cards, for instance, and help people understand uh, why they, uh, they're troubled in different ways. But we're really at the end of the show now. So okay. let's, let's come back to that. People can go to the sourcecards.com and they, mm -hmm. and they can also purchase your book um play your cards right and um yeah yeah and that's also on the website the sourcecards.com and there's an interactive widget you can put in your birthday and you can look up your cards to play it's a whole fun interaction that we created yeah this is great so alexander dunlop thank you so much i love talking with you we had such a good time <laughs> yeah and uh, i hope the audience uh, is uh, excited about this because we'll do some more and um, and uh, life life goes on in unique ways that we're experiencing it's a very interesting time it's actually i think cataclysmic in a good way we're shaking off an old paradigm and giving birth to a new paradigm yeah let's look at it that way that's great thank you okay thank you peter and this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at prn.live. I can be reached at peter at heartriver, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks so much for listening. <laughs>